my mom bought me a book on speed reading and it's taken me like five years to finish it. And so I, <laughs> I Welcome. You're listening to Paleo Cheese Podcast, Episode 8, Part 1, with special guest, author, and musician, Jeremy Wagner. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeremiah Bannister. And I'm Chad Lutsky. And you're listening to the Paleo Cheese Podcast. It's the podcast that tosses film onto the Chase Lounge to discuss and psychoanalyze, and every once in a while to point and laugh at. And man, we have a really, really cool episode today, Chad. And even cooler, we have a guest, dude. Yes, Mr. Jeremy Wagner. Jeremy is the uh, author of The Armageddon Chord and Rabbit Heart. And he's also the guitarist for death metal band Broken Hope. Jeremiah and I both uh, play guitar, love talking books and movies, and so does uh, Jeremy. So we thought, you know, it was uh, a no-brainer to have him on. So welcome, Jeremy. Thanks for hanging out, man. Thank you guys for having me. You guys yeah. actually play guitar. I act like I do. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> you know, it's, it's one of no. these things, man, where once you've heard certain people play and you watch their fingers and you're like, man, dude. And then you look at your strumming and you're like, AC, EG. <laughs> so no. so it's, uh, I'm on a different level. You guys are on a different level. I'm surprised how many horror writers, horror people play an instrument. Chad, I know. I've seen pictures of you in an old band that you were in. Josh Mallerman, John Skip, Ronald Melfi, Rio, Yoris, and even Brian Keane I've seen screwing around with the guitar. Yeah, yeah. I've heard him try. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And you wrote um, a book, man, was... about a guitar god. Yeah. 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 Eric Weiss, so the, the god of guitar. Yeah, the Armageddon chord, man. Jeremiah and I were talking earlier, and uh, I mentioned the book and a little bit about what it was about, and it reminded me of, and I'm wondering if you drew any influence at all, it reminded me of like the, uh, I think it's called the Tritone, and like, yeah. you know, which Black yeah. Sabbath used down there, yeah. debut album. And the Tritone, uh, before we got recorded here, you know, we were talking about Slayer, mm -hmm. so the Slayer album. Diabolos and Musica is basically about the tritone. And that's actually mentioned in the Armageddon chord. You know, the Armageddon chord is like if you took Raiders of the Lost Ark and the movie Rockstar, but, but not so fucking cheesy, <laughs> uh, and also mixed in some real, like, classic satanic horror and... Uh, um, even even like the movie Crossroads, if you remember that movie, mm -hmm. yeah, mixed with Ralph Macchio and Steve I. I love that movie to this Ralph day. Ralph Macchio, man, it's all yeah. about all the all these things culminating together. You know, Robert Johnson at the crossroads, raising the devil with his guitar to an ancient song written in hieroglyphics, which basically raises hell on earth. You know, and mm -hmm. uh, and it's also about the devil throughout history be, being given all these names through all these religions. And even it, it, it ties in like uh, ancient Egyptian evil deities with the book of Revelation from the Bible. Even the true holy cross Christ was crucified on is made into a guitar <laughs> to save the fucking world. It's uh, crazy. So that was my first published novel. I'd written you know, my starter novels, which I always say starter novels to me remind me of a band's demo tape. You know, you think that, that it's badass. Wow. <laughs> or demo, you know, but you really need a lot to do a lot more work, man. Same thing with an author. You know, my first novel was this behemoth of, you know, like a ream and a half of paper um, about a giant sea monster. Back in my early 20s, I'd been writing short stories and lyrics, you know, before that. And I thought, yeah, this is the shit. And I knew nothing about editing or anything. And, you know, Elmore Leonard, by the way, from Michigan, where you boys are. Yeah. Um, I love Elmore Leonard. He said, once you write about a million words, then you're you're probably a writer and coming into your own or something. Yeah. So, so yeah. 
all that said, the idea for the Armageddon Chord was something that was a seed in my head, you know, as even a teenager, and, and I just finally got around to writing it. But I had to write a bunch of shit before that and learn a lot. Artisan News Service had a video about it. And the way they described it, they yeah. said it's like a blend of the movie Crossroads, The Da Vinci Code, and Devil Went Down to Georgia. And I, I like, too, um, how the idea that the family convinced uh, the protagonist to play the song. Yeah, because the guy, like the character, was really, I uh, was heavily influenced by Steve Vai. Not just, when I say influenced, not me as a guitar player. He is one of my favorite guitar players. But Steve Vai's life story. And a long time ago, Steve Vai's website, he uploaded all his actual diaries, man, from like he wrote on the road, like in all the bands he was in, Alcatraz, uh, the David Lee Roth years, White Snake, uh, when he was in there a little bit, and then S Solo. And I would read all these diaries and I'd take notes and draw from, from his experience. So I took that intimate look into what it was like. Steve I to me is a guitar god. And to see how he lived and he would reference his family. I remember he said something like, you can really never thank your parents enough for everything. And uh, I took that to heart. So when I was writing the, the protagonist and shaping him, it was like modeled after Steve Vai, not only as, uh, as an extraordinary talent, because again, we're talking the guitar god, the greatest guitar player on the planet, but that personal backstory and how, you know, uh, my character went to, I think, Juilliard or something, and uh, sort of like, well, sort of like Ralph Macchio and at Crossroads, it wasn't much of a stretch, but, and then that family support and that, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. I like too how you, you were asked a question, and it was funny because I, I think it was maybe during one of your interviews, because you have like you you have two styles in these in these videos, and I had to do a double take to find out. I'm like, is this the same guy? Because man, you you clean up, man. Your hair slicked back in a ponytail. You got this uh, black button up shirt. You yeah, know, and, and you're at the I convention. Think, I said, who is this guy? Yeah, a couple of the videos. I know what you're talking about. That was yeah. back when the Armageddon Court came out. Like I do like a. I did like a small book tour in uh, Massachusetts and Connecticut and stuff. And I, I was on some, I don't know, kind of weird cable access show. And I, I know I had my glasses on and my hair slicked back. And the same with, um, uh, not Wasn't it Stoker? something else, but yeah, yeah. Stoker, yep. the Stokers. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It, with Artisan, I think that's yes. what Oh, yeah. So you said that you'd been given this really great bit of advice. And I just wanted to tell you this before we even move forward on anything is that, you know, I'm, I'm, as our listeners know, I'm writing a book and I'm at the end. It's my first book awesome. and I'm, I'm coming up on the end of it. And it's a real personal story uh, about my daughter and her life and death with childhood brain cancer. And okay. you said in there, you said you were given this really sage bit of advice about write about what you know and you said you play guitar you play as heavy as possible you write super brutal music and you're touring the world and stuff like that and that you you took that to heart that idea of writing what you know and when i heard you say that it was so encouraging to me i just wanted to just on a personal level just tell you that say that something that you said a, a bit of advice that you'd heard from somebody else so pass it along but that it was yeah, really encouraging to you. yeah yeah it's true. I heard that a long time ago. I was a younger writer. Write what you know. And uh, the things I write about that I don't know about, I, I at least make a damn good attempt to try sounding like I know about it. Like Rabbit Heart, you know, is a female protagonist, you know. And uh, I drew that, drew from great women I know in my life to make that character. And, yeah, with the Armageddon Chord, absolutely friggin' lootly. You know, I took all my, the years I've been, signed to metal blade records putting out albums being a guitar player touring you know just just used it it sounds cliche sometimes right what you know but it really works you know life life experiences are what you know anything mm -hmm. that you, you know what i mean so are you working on anything uh new right now so yeah um so i've got a new horror novel that uh i gotta do a little more editing on this is just goes right into 
right in what you know. The main character is a Chicago police detective. And I did a lot of research on, you know, detectives, procedures, terminology, methods, you know, shit I knew nothing about. Mm -hmm. And um, I was really fortunate to meet a guy who I, I had a, a woman who I'm friends with. She unfortunately passed away recently, Laura Caldwell. And she edited the last draft of my book. Now, mm -hmm. Laura Caldwell, I should mention, that, um, published about 12 novels and a couple other nonfiction books. And she was also a professor of law at Loyola University and a, and a lawyer. So when I had her do an edit for me, I asked her, hey, do you know any detectives from, you know, Chicago detectives I could connect with to get, have them read this manuscript and make sure I got my facts straight and everything. So she hooked me up with this great detective, Peter Kokonis. He's actually retired. He's about 70 some years old. Totally awesome dude. He just fit, literally finished reading that manuscript today and made some notes. So, you know, I like to just be as accurate as possible. So I'm going to take his sure. notes, make sure stuff's on the up and up. And then that will be, once I get that in, do a polish, I think that'll be ready for publication. So that's, that's next up. And then I have another book done, which uh, total departure from anything I've ever written. It's actually a true life story of a famous chef named Curtis Duffy. It's, it's a memoir. Now, Curtis Duffy is a world-class chef. He's like, you know, he's got three Michelin stars like five years in a row. Uh, Netflix made a documentary film on him called wow. Four Grace. That was about his last restaurant, Grace, yeah. in Chicago. And he has a new restaurant opening up this year. It's pushed back the opening because of COVID-19, of course. Yeah. But hopefully later this summer, it'll open up. It's called Ever. But Curtis Duffy, a good friend of mine, um, really interesting man. He He's a huge metal fan, huge rock, hard rock fan. Um, Glenn Danzig is like guy he worships. But he um, his whole career path, is insane because he was raised in this Hell's Angels biker brutal home. His dad was a biker and leader of a bike gang. Brutal childhood. I'm talking very abusive, very violent, wow. crazy shit. Um, and as if you watch the Four Grace documentary, you'll see a little bit scratches the surface of how he got interested in in in, in the culinary world at a young age. And started cooking and became this great chef and worked his way up to working for like some of the most amazing restaurants in the world till he got his own restaurant. But in between all that turbulent childhood and then his biker dad abducted his mom who divorced him and was in like this huge 10 hour plus standoff with SWAT teams and cops and then killed wow. him and murdered him. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Someone put it best, a friend of mine, uh, an author you may have heard of, Peter Blonner. He's like a crime thriller author, you know, uh, one of my favorite authors. Uh, the reason I found Peter Blonner is because Stephen King's on writing, A Memoir of the Craft. He had a list of all these books that he liked, and I always like to read what Stephen King reads because we, I don't know, I usually find we have similar tastes and stuff, so we... Back in the day when that book came out, there was a book, Peter Blonner, The Intruder, was the book. And loved it. Reached out to Peter Blonner. Long story short, we've been friends ever since. Anyway, I'm always bouncing stuff off Peter because he's like a mentor to me, too. You know, he's always giving great advice. So when I when I started writing this memoir, I told him what it was about. I'm like, you know, I've never done this before. And um, I'm a horror novelist, you know, dark fiction novelist. Uh, and... Peter's like, well, what's it about? And I told him the whole thing. Well, I just told you guys about Curtis Stuffy's life and everything. And he said it best. He's like, well, he knows that I love, I, I read a lot of nonfiction. It just has to, you know, be up my alley. So I'm into like mafia mob books and serial killer and true crime type of nonfiction. 
So Peter Noah's I love the book Wise Guy, which Goodfellas was based on about mm -hmm. Henry Hill. So Peter Barr is like, man, you know, you could write it with your narrative the way uh, Nicholas Pelleggi wrote Wise Guy. And he goes, dude, the subject matter, this thing's going to write itself. Yeah, yeah. It's Sons of Anarchy meets Anthony Bourdain, <laughs> Kitchen Confidential. And then once he told me that, I'm like, yeah, man, this is great. And um, I only write shit that I'm I'm into, period. You know, I'm not yeah, yeah. like, uh, you know. And I'd like you to write a book about gardening, you know, it ain't going to happen. You know what I mean? Uh, or write a romance fiction book, you know, just won't happen. But Curtis, because we be became such tight friends and I knew his story and his desire to tell his stories, because he was always like that Netflix documentary, just scratch the surface, man. I really want to get into this. And um, so... I said, yeah, let's do it. You know, he approached me, asked me to write it. Now, because he had read the Armageddon Horror, he had read Rabbit Heart um, as a friend, and he was into those. But also, it was a trust thing. He told me, you're the only guy I trust to tell this story to. So we did like 60, 70 hours of interviews and transcribed it all. And here we are. So long story short, that's the other book. Right now, at this moment, almost done uh, with, with, with a, I think, a final edit. So I had an editor, uh, friends with, work with uh, in New York. She's awesome. Uh, she And she specializes in nonfiction, not mm -hmm. too much genre fiction. So she was a perfect fit uh, to work on this, on this book. And uh, so I got the horror novel. I got the Curtis Stuffy book. In between shit, you know, I like when I finish either writing a draft or editing a, something, I put it to the side and jump on something else. In between all that, I got like maybe I'm about 30 pages into this novella that I had started, but that got kicked to the back burner. And then there's another novel that at one point I was starting, I think I got about 120 pages in, and um. That's been in the works for a while. I'll, I'll return to that when the dust settles with these two books. The story, the memoir sounds crazy. And I've seen the, I've seen the, uh, the image on, is it Netflix, right? Yeah, Netflix. Yeah. yeah, on Netflix. I've seen the image on Netflix for that documentary. In fact, it was in the, uh, the bar for like referring you and saying, look, we think you'd yeah. be into that. And so that oh, cool. I've seen that. But when you brought up the, the uh, Chicago detective, Right. And if, if yeah. anyone knew this Chicago detective, I had this. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. This is definitely not the kind of detective you would ever want to talk to. It's not a real detective. But I don't know if you if either of you ever seen the movie Windy City Heat. Oh, oh my God. Bobcat Goldwood. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a it's a stunt, I basically. Haven't. And the whole okay. thing is this guy. They make this guy. He's, he's a real dude and he's kind of a zany, wild guy that's megalomaniac. But for for no good reason okay he doesn't have a good reason to be thinking so highly of himself and his skills and they bring him in and basically set up this entire thing to where he somehow gets the lead role in this movie over ben affleck and uh sylvester stallone and the whole time they're just dragging this guy along but his role is a detective in chicago and okay and it just it was it was so hilarious just to even think about that because anytime Somebody says a detective from Chicago. It's just the <laughs> first thing I think of, man. I'm like, Windy City Heat, dude. <laughs> and, and if people haven't seen yeah. it, they have to see it because it's almost, it, you wonder, is this for real? Like, is this an actual prank? Did they really pull this stunt on this guy? Even to the point where he's, he's begging for a, uh, a stunt person because they're throwing him in this bin of trash that's filled with uh, manure. And he's wow. like, he was getting really upset about it. And he said, well, I want a stunt person. He's really ticked off. So they give him a stunt person. And later on, there's a, a very intimate scene. And they bring in the supermodel. And he's all excited about it. And right before it, they, they, he's allergic, by the way. to uh, He's lactose intolerant. And he made it really clear in the beginning. But this scene requires tons of cheese and tons of milk to be put in a blender with pizza and all this stuff. And they have him do it over and over. So he's drinking all this stuff. And then they bring in the, for the scene, right? The intimate scene. 
And they said they cut right as it's about to happen. They said stunt person and they bring in the stunt person. And it's somebody about 50 pounds heavier than him that looks real. I mean, it's not even close. Wow. And, and he's like, what? No, no. <laughs> they totally, they totally hose the guy. So, but it, the whole movie is like that. But um, it's like, it, re- it reminds me of when they used a black guy for uh, East Freely and Fan- Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park as a stunt double. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have, have you ever seen that, Jeremy? Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Great times, dude. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Chad and I we have a we have an awesome review of that. We still have to share that review, man. On yeah, we Facebook did a video page. review probably yeah. a decade or so ago. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah, I saw it, I saw it on TV when it first came out. You guys ever seen uh, Shakes the Clown? Wasn't Bob Cat Goldwaif in that? You remember? That? I think no. I saw it. I know what you're talking like, about though. He's like uh, I don't know, alcoholic, uh, <laughs> drug abusing. You know, bomb in the barrel, loser, clown. That I can't remember. I can't remember who. I can't remember who the actress is. But dude, it's it, it it's a disaster. It's really funny, but you got to have that kind of humor, man. So, Jeremy, wow. what 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 books are you reading right now, man? Are you, we see this awesome shelf behind you with a whole bunch yeah. of awesome goodies, man. I mean, that's a really cool looking set you got back there. Yeah, this is uh, one that we got. My my wife reads a lot too, so we've got. Shit, man, like cute. I don't know how many bookcases, man. Thousands of books, though. But this one, this, so this is where I'm at is uh, my office. So this is where I write full time, you know, and just do do nothing but writing in here and um, and reading, of course. But sort of organized. Like there's a top shelf up here you can't see, but it's all it's a bunch of Stephen King books. And the thing is, there's like duplicates and triplicates of, of Stephen King books. So there's either original first editions or, you know, just different, you know, like the different versions of, of, of Stephen King books. What's the green one? It looks like it's, it's cover facing outward. Hang on, let me look. I, I forget. This is, oh, you know what? This actually isn't a book. It's some kind of, it looks like a morbid angel logo on there. Oh, it's some kind of weird pop-up oh wow yeah we got it you got to see that look at that thing the necronomicon pop-up book that's right (laughs) (laughs) oh that is so perfect yeah Yeah. Yeah. this book if you guys ever watch true detective yeah yeah guys watching that this book gallison before Mm -hmm. the series such a great great book man i fell in love with nick pixelato just just off of that and then this is just a mishmash of either shark books, Jaws. This is the first novel I ever read, actually, as a kid. And I not this edition. This is the original hardcover. But um, if you can see that, it's uh, the paperback edition after the movie came out. My mom and everybody in my family, my, my aunts and uncles, all had the paperback copy of that. Jaws was everywhere, you know, 1975. Yeah. And I was, and I'm like, wow, what's with that giant shark and the woman <laughs> swimming? Like, it freaked me the hell out. And so I wanted to read it. Not that I could get my head around, you know, adult situations in a novel, but I got, I got through the book. And that's the first adult novel I read, and it really influenced me. By the way, I'll share this with you. Jeremiah, since you were talk, watching those old, old interviews, this is, I don't know if you can see that, this is the Armageddon Chord, the original edition. Wow. Back when yeah. it came out. But it got re-released this last last year with this cover. Look at that. New, different publisher. And um, unbeknownst to me, I just found out last week from this publisher Riverdale Avenue Books, um, the Independent Publishers Book Awards, it's called the Ippy Award. I won it for uh, one for Rabbit Heart, like best horror ebook. And uh, the Armageddon Cord won a bronze last week for the wow. re release. So the re release is yeah. like, um, you know, sometimes like people like, you know, Brian Keene. Uh, or even and even Stephen King, you know, and, and other authors, uh, Jack Ketchum too. 
they would have their books, re-released books with extra content um, mm -hmm. or the author's desired version of the book. That's what this is. This is the edition I wish would have came out originally back in 2010. Just because it's, you know, my my original publisher cut a bunch of stuff out. And, uh, um, you know, so I, I just put stuff back in, overhauled it. I'm real proud of it. But anyway, it won a Ippy Award. I, I didn't even know. I got an email from that publisher saying, you know, you won an Ippy Award for the Armageddon Court. I'm like, I did. When the when did this happen? <laughs> well, because of COVID-19. Yeah, right. They didn't do the Ippy Awards. They did them virtually. I'm like, wow, well, thanks for submitting it. But, um. That's a pretty anyway, dope deal. That's a pretty uh, dope yeah. deal to be able to be like, you know, getting a phone call. Yo, bro, you you won an award. We re-released your stuff. And you're like, I did. When did I win that? You know. <laughs> I mean, what a, what a yeah. great a great situation. Dude, I'll tell you what, though, it's, it, it's way cooler than uh, when your record label licenses uh, your your all your albums to some uh, foreign uh, imprint and like they just photocopy the the the, the cover and shit without. <laughs> asking you hey do you have like the high res cover and uh you want to add any liner notes to this you know they just put the shit out there you know so but that's yeah, a whole other story it reminds me almost of the whole taylor swift saga i know it's way different i mean you go from like death metal to taylor swift yeah but she, she's she's okay. got that whole ordeal right now with uh she's uh just going crazy against uh george soros yeah guess, yeah because i guess soros bought her uh bought the music and has like control of the the entirety of her yeah. work and i mean she's she's going crazy over i mean obviously i mean it's it's outrageous right um and so yeah and i'm glad you showed that there's a difference between the the old one and that they uh put it back out because as we're talking to people i mean i'm putting together a really cool list of books that i want to purchase yeah and if if i wouldn't have known the difference and so yeah. to know that the new one is what you wish would have yeah, come so, out earlier. Yeah. That's so I'm glad even for the for the viewers Plus, that they're able to know. One, this one's out of print, and like if you try to buy it on Amazon, you know, people are want like 200 bucks for the friggin' book, which oh, yeah, is friggin' ridiculous. But um, I will if I can, I want to pimp one other book. This is the most recent thing I've been published in the big book of blasphemy. Oh, I've seen that around here. Yeah, uh, I've got a story in here called Norwegian Wood which is about a guy in a black metal band, you know, like I, I drew from like the nineties era black metal bands that were really notorious for burning churches and fucking murdering each other and, and shit, you know, and, but they were, you know, a lot of those guys were really posers, you know, like it was all <laughs> like, you know, we're evil, you know, and yeah, you know, I like some black metal bands. I don't want this black metal bands, but there's certain bands that they're not really evil, you know, but my yeah, they're, story, taking, they're taking virtue signaling to the so extreme. The, the, the front man of the band really believes this shit. And uh, some evil shit happens. You'll have to read it. But, but so many great, a lot of great writers in that one. So that's the, that's yeah. the newest thing I've got floating, floating out there. So write what you know, Jeremiah. Yeah, yeah. What about <laughs> you, Chad, man? What do you read? I haven't killed a goat or anything, but. You have you haven't <laughs> killed a goat. No, <laughs> <laughs> I've never killed a goat, man. But I've had to experience killing a chicken. Yeah, and I'm telling you, man, it's weird, <laughs> dude. It's a weird thing, man. You know, there. It's funny. I'll just say it quick. It was uh, I was I was homeless for a while. I was a runaway, right, in my uh -huh. senior year of school. And this this pastor, this family he said, "Hey, you can stay with us." But they had a rule, and the rule was, if you eat with us, then you have to help prepare the food. And I didn't like, I just figured, well, I'm cracking eggs, you know, or whatever. No, I had to go get eggs. And that was fine with me. I'm like, okay, I can go to the, you know, chicken coop or whatever every morning. That's fine. It's kind of cool, actually. Smoke a cigarette or whatever. So I'm going out getting the eggs and they're like, oh, no, 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 no. We need, we need a chicken. We're eating chicken. And I'm like, okay, what do you mean? I said, wait, where do, you, where do I get it? And they're like, we well, got to kill one. I'm thinking what? And so I had to, they sat there, man, gave me the axe, and I'm thinking, wow. bro, like what is this? And I did it, man. I had to do that. I had to pluck it. I do the whole wow. nine yards, man. That's another level. But I'm I'm assuming yeah. that, that a goat, <laughs> you know, taking the knife whack to the goat, I figure that would be pretty intense, man. Yeah. I'm not reading anything new. Uh, you know, I, I, I think I say this 
every other week uh, that I haven't been making the time to read as much. So I'm not reading anything new, but I found out earlier today that my book, The Pale White, is nominated for a This Is Horror Award for Novella of the Year. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, and and uh, 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 Anthology I'm in, uh, Midnight in the Graveyard by Silver Shamrock, that is up for mm-hmm. Anthology of the Year, actually with... Awesome. This is horror and another award. I think it's Indie Horror Book Award. I think is yeah. the, the name of the other one. So, yeah, I I, I wasn't awesome. really expecting that. So I, I yeah, I was excited about that. Yeah, awesome. congratulations. Thanks. Man. Thanks. Silver yeah. Sand and, Shamrock seems to be doing some cool stuff. You know, I see, yeah. see po- posts yeah. on Twitter about what they're doing. Um, yeah. The, the, did you say what was the name of the 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 first thing? Pale White. Yeah, the pale white. Yeah. So that is that your newest release? Uh, no, that came out in I think it was October. My newest one is the Neon Owl. It's a like a humorous crime thriller. The okay. pale white is like a coming of age dark. So I've something. got Foster Homes and Flies, Skullface Boy, a couple other ones. Obviously, Out Behind the Barn, You and Bowden, my buddy Bowden. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, that's awesome, man. That's, that's actually what I've got to say, man, for my books. Well, first yeah. of all, before the special thing, and Chad already knows about it, so I can't, it's not going to be a surprise to him, but I've been reading, went back and was reading these poems. And, yeah. Uh, 100 best love poems, man. And uh, going through, I mean, I've, you know, Robert Frost, you know, uh, Edwin yeah. Arlington Robinson. You, you've got, of course, A.E. Housen, or Robert Louis Stevenson. Uh, I like the the Wallace Stevens Emperor of Ice Cream. It's always been one of my favorite uh, to read. But it's just, you know, I, I love going through these. Every couple of years, I've actually had it since school. But uh, so I was going through it this week. But I got this super awesome thing. You were talking about a book, you know, people are selling for, for big money. This is by far the most expensive and... Um, <laughs> You're making me feel expensive. bad now. No, well, no, 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 no. It is, it is also one of the best investments in a book that I've done in a long, long time. And I'm not just saying that because he's my man, but I got this halo. Oh, of wait, I got that too. Look at that, man. Yeah. yeah. The, all the stuff in one. Yeah. What, what number, what number do you have? Cause there's how I, many, how many did they make Chad? This is I have tell everybody. 52. I think there's, I 52, yeah. there's 52. I'm a sucker for hardcover limited editions, man. Like, but this is fantastic. Love that artwork too. I know that yeah. that's the thing, you know, because I was I, I read uh, Skullface Boy, uh, absolutely love it. In fact, that's that's one of my all time favorite um, fiction stories. Although some of those stories are true, uh, you know, there's elements of truth in there, and mm-hmm. including including an apology to Buffalo Bill. Um, but <laughs> the uh, yeah, um, so and I read a uh, Foster Homes and Flies, so I read yeah. that. I was actually reading one or one or the other. I was reading while my wife was um, in labor. It wasn't active labor though. I wasn't like sitting there while she's pushing. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let me finish yeah, this page. Yeah, hold, hold on, sweetheart. Yeah, I'm almost done with this chapter. Just hold your breath, you know. Um, and so do those kegels. Um, but no, the uh, so. But I decided I was like, you know, I, I wanted to buy more, and I would I would ask him to say, well, you know, what books are really good? And I I was down in Battle Creek, and we're talking. And he he. Uh, showed me his his original one which is there's no number right there's no number on his because he's fan- <laughs> mr fancy pants and uh and he, he told me about it. i'm like dude I, I need that book and he's like oh it's it's sold out like in the first day you know in hours of time they were gone and i was yeah, I remember uh, you tweeted that i think too thanks to everyone yeah. who bought this thing it's already gone <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah that's awesome and so i was i was heartbroken man you know, uh, sackcloth and ashes, dude, for like a week, you know, just totally in despair. <laughs> and uh, so so I uh, so finally we were talking and, and I just brought it up and I was saying how bummed out I was that I wasn't able to get this special edition of his book because it's actually four books in one. And he goes, yeah. oh, man, he said, there's one right now on eBay. And so we went right to eBay and I saw the price. I'm like, oh, that's 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 fine. And uh, come oh, to find yeah. out, it was fine no matter what. But come to my wife told me later, she's like, "You do realize that was in pounds, not dollars, right?" <laughs> so it was even more than anticipated. But yeah. and and it was cool because I thought we were going to get it at the end of the month. That's what it said because um, it was coming in from England. 
Yeah. And so I was like, man, you know, this is such a bummer. I got to wait. And one day we get all these boxes come in, you know, from, from Amazon and stuff. And one from eBay, right, from this group. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's opening it up, and she thought it was a different set. She thought it was her books. And she opens it, and she goes, Jeremiah, it's, it's your book. And I was because my brain was thinking, you know, end of the month, I just shelved it. And so I'm not even thinking. I was like, my book. And she showed me, and it was like the heavens opened up, man. And <laughs> sunlight, bursts of sunlight just came down. And I, you know, that oh moment. And I said, this is so yeah. great. And so, so yes, man, I am officially – one of the what 52 people on the planet. Well, we got Jeremy's another one, and I got number 25. Nice, yeah. Cool. And the publisher told me, uh, when it sold out, he said, If anybody ever asks, um, there are a couple of booksellers who every Thunderstorm books release, they buy a couple of them and then they'll stick them up on eBay. So I knew that it was a legit seller. One, one's from the UK and one is from the States, but. Zach McCain did the artwork. He also did the artwork for Out Behind the Barn, uh, mm-hmm. the Pale White, Seeing Deep Waters You. And uh, mm-hmm. I think that's all I, I've had him do. But yeah, he's great, man. You have a regular pattern with, with novellas. Do you average a certain amount per year? I'm not going to have as many out this year as because I'm doing a lot of collaborations. Yeah. Um, so that's, I, I'm not even working on anything that's just my own. So I don't know if I'm even going to be able to put another like thing out, but because I self publish a lot of my stuff, like, you know, half of it, I mean, yeah. I might, I, I wrote, uh, same deep water as you, you know, I think it was about 10 days I wrote it, but it's, yeah. it's, uh, it was easy just because it will, for one, it's short and another one, it's, uh, uh, almost all of it is autobiographical. So it was, it, it made for a e- really easy, you know, sure. I just had to kind of revisit a moment in time, but yeah, I'm just always interested in the craft of other writers. You know, you don't see a book or short story for me like every year. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm just such a stickler for editing and, you know, I'm just want to make sure I got the best possible. Yeah. You want to be proud of it when it's out there. I'm sitting on a shitload of material, but, uh, you know, it's just editing, polishing, and then, you know, prioritizing. But, yeah, again, I'm, I'm just fascinated by the process, you know. I, I wanted to ask you that question for a while. Was, Chad know. Chad influenced me, man, on, on process uh, because there's a – I was asking him one time, you know, I'm like, how do you get past all of the, you know, distractions? especially in the day and age of social media. I mean, that's so tough because, you know, they, they, all of these platforms base so much of, of what they do in the presentation of it uh, off of the psychology of things like gambling, for example, and addiction. And so the, the constant dopamine release of seeing new posts in your newsfeed and stuff, and it, in a real <laughs> subtle way, you're finding, you know, checking your phone all the time. Do I have another notification? And you go on, it's like one, you know, it is mm-hmm. a live, it's a live video from a news group or something. You're like, Bruh! and but, but you go back. And so I said, how do you, how did you get past that, man? Like, how do you control that? Especially because he is really active on social media and he's able to balance that out. And he, he gave mm-hmm. me a secret, man. I'm going to, I'm hoping he's okay with it. If not, I'm just going to cut it out. But uh, he told me about this thing. It's called an alpha smart. And this is like so old school. I don't know if people can see that. Wow. Al- but, Alpha Smart 3000. Yeah, I have two of them. I have an Alpha Smart. I, I don't Neo. heard of that. Oh, well, I'll tell you, man. There's like 10 people who have. Uh, it's amazing. <laughs> like, you have, to, you have to almost be like at a certain <laughs> age. Because it's old. I mean, it, it, but it's, a, it, it's an Apple device. And yeah. so you can hook it up. It's, it's got a little cable uh, port in there. So you can hook it up to printers. Uh, you can hook it up to your computer in a USB and click send and it'll just, and what is it, like 50,000 words or something like that that can be stored on this at any time. It runs off of batteries, these, these double A batteries and it lasts forever. I've, I put batteries in this like a year and a half ago, I think. And they're still, it's fully charged <laughs> I mean, yeah. and they use wow. it all the time for the notes. But this thing, there's, there's this one, which is meant it's, it's, a little more durable you can drop it and stuff and it's mainly for children in schools that they were using it for back then before pads and other things and then uh i have a an alpha smart neo there was a newer one that came out with lower ratings interestingly enough 
but it's a it's an alpha smart dana and what it is is that the dana has a uh, uh, bluetooth capability and it also has um the screen lights up you know kind of like those watches you push the button it glows blue yeah. right and so it has that on the screen so you can be in the dark or outside or whatever but it's awesome because I, I put this bugger in my bag and i don't even carry around my laptop anymore you know because i'm like if i go to a coffee shop and i hop on my laptop money down says i'm going to be checking twitter you know what i'm saying and mm-hmm. so yeah. you just take this where, wherever you go and bada boom bada bing you've got yourself this cool keyboard and it saves yeah oh, right wow. there yeah that's the yeah. that's the neo yeah it's you wow. can get about uh you can get about three or four lines on here so it also helps if you're one of these people who tend to try to edit as they go which is what i do instead of just kind of yeah. free flowing it but <clears throat> i mean you can always scroll back up but uh yeah man i mean you can't get distracted with this thing you can take it outside and uh that's what i do man i go out wow, and and right. right on it. That's rad, man. Holy cow. I forgot to show this, but I wanted to... I, I This was in uh, Nightworm's package, and I did not subscribe to it, but one of... Uh, Tracy, she's one of the readers that like my stuff and everything, and we follow each other on Twitter, and she reviews books and stuff, but she knew that I didn't get this, and I was a little bummed, so she actually sent it to me, and it's... it's oh, it's right funny. on. This is yes. Jeremy's, awesome. Jeremy's uh, guitar pick, man. My favorite pick is a Dunlop Purple Heavy. Yeah. And, and this, this is pretty darn close to uh, yeah, that's, close that's, to that. that's a Dunlop pick, one millimeter. And, you know, the reason it's it's funny, because I originally, when I started working with Dunlop, I wanted uh, a black pick with the green Broken Hope logo and a green signature. Mm-hmm. And they're like, you know, uh, and I wanted the the sharpie pointy like you got for the attack, you know. And my artist relations person's like, it would really make life easier in the factory if you didn't do black because we do colors by the gauge. Mm-hmm. And the one millimeter is a purple color, and we, you know, it's a lot to turn over the whatever it was to make them black. I'm like, shit, man, I don't know. I don't see any death metal bands with purple picks and green logos. <laughs> I'm like, go for it, man. So I've been yeah. using those for eight years now. Yeah. Well, I like it. So, yeah. The Nightworms package uh, and Jeremiah, I don't know how much you know about Nightworms, but they do this subscriber horror book thing, mm-hmm. where they curate horror books, put them together in a package to subscribers every month. It sounds awesome. They're awesome. Yeah. Um, hi, Sadie. And, Ashley and everybody and yeah. night arms are great. So I did a thing with the Armageddon cord where my publisher provided night arms like X amount, how many subscribers they had at the time. I'm like, I don't want money. Keep, you know, whatever you can do, give them paperback editions of the Armageddon cord for their subscribers. It's great. People are going to read the book. We'll get reviews, you know, and, and it, it's all about the horror community, blah, blah, blah. And I really believe in Nightworms and what they're doing. I thought it was great. So what I did was publisher said, okay, no problem. We'll send them as many books as they want. If you want that done, go ahead. So that was really cool, my publisher. So um, the publisher got sent me the books. I uh, signed them all. And then in each one, I put a bookmark in and one of my broken home guitar picks. So. Jeremiah, you don't know, you aren't familiar with Nightworms, but you are familiar with Mother Horror, Sadie Hartman, because she's going to be on the show yes. soon. Yes. So you know, but yeah. I, I was going to ask that, but I didn't want to, <laughs> I didn't yeah. want to be Sadie super ignorant. Awesome, but I, That's cool. Yeah. When is she going to be on? I don't know, like Friday, maybe, maybe next week, or we might yeah. wait. We're really excited about, uh, we, we just scheduled, uh, I don't know if we can say anything yet, his, his last name sure. starts rhymes with hamsdale yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right on he's coming yeah. on to hang out yeah. with us next uh awesome. at the beginning of next month so yeah oh cool man you know you know what bro um at the beginning of the show and i i won't try to get off topic here too much but this is relevant to like sadie hartman you guys were asking hey what are you reading right now and and mm-hmm. chad you mentioned that you haven't found a lot of time to write. I I have a 
to be read pile like that yeah. could fill this bookcase. Yeah. And you know, Stephen King always said to write a lot, you gotta read a lot. And I've read a lot in my life, but I wish I'm writing so much, I don't read a lot. You know, I read a little bit at, at, at night or if I'm traveling, I'll I'll read a lot more. But um I'm so impressed, man, with someone like Sadie Hartman and any of these oh, um book bloggers. I don't know yeah. how the hell you read so many freaking books. Um, there's a guy on Twitter, uh, Chad, I don't know if you're friends with him. His name's Jason, but he goes by the name Pinhead Spawn. And oh, dude, yeah. Jason's awesome. Dude. The, so the drummer? Jason, Jason's great, dude. I, I, yeah. I met him years ago at a horror con mm -hmm. um, in Texas we were at. It was like Jack Ketchum and Brian Keene. It was like world horror or something and really cool dude and then we reconnected years later and he's one of the judges for the splatter punk awards and uh, yeah. uh we we got to hang out at killer con last year and mm -hmm. whatever but the thing about jason is i picked his brain like i pick your brain about the craft i wanted to ask him because i know he reads a lot i'm like how many books do you read in a year? Because I know you read a lot in review. And he goes, well, I read like, you know, over 300 books yeah. last year. Wow. Like, wow. It's like a fucking book a day. And I'm like, how do you do it? And he's like, well, I don't watch TV. Yeah. And I ignore this and I ignore that. I'm just, I'm just so impressed. So whether yeah. it's J guys like Jason, Sadie Hartman, and other book bloggers, I mean, I'm really, I'm really freaking impressed. Yeah, me too. Man. I just that many books. I mean, like Stephen King, you know, like in, 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 I'm writing a memoir of the craft. Even he said, he goes, you know, I'm a slow reader. I, people think I'm read a lot of shit, but I'm really slow reader. I'm not, I don't know if I'm a slow reader. I mean, when I'm really into a book, I can't put it down. So I try to get blast mm -hmm. through it. But there, there's things in life, man, you know, that come up. And I guess what I'm trying to say is I wish I, wish I read more and I, I wish I could read on the level of uh, like a Sadie Hartman or a Jason, <laughs> you know, because, yeah. yeah. you know, that's to, to be red pile. I got here. I want to get through that shit before I die. I want to yeah. read all these books. You know what I mean? Yeah. But anyway. I wish I oh, had yeah. that problem. Yeah. Yeah. So. I wish I had like a stack of books. I've even, I've even pled with the listeners and the viewers to say, look, if you <laughs> have books you'd like to, to send along, man, cause I, you know, I want to do book reviews and not just movie reviews, but also do different book reviews. And we talk about books every time we're on the show. And, uh, yeah. And and Chad really really wants people to send him as many books as they want. No, <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah, he, no. Was, he was begging. He, he was begging. He's like, please bring it out. You know, no, but no, he he was not. But I was, and so you know, it's it's another one of those things. You know, it's like you've got this cool thing going, man. Where on the one hand, you know, you're getting awards left and right while you're sleeping, and uh, and you've got stacks of books, and so it's like, come on, man. You're doing good well, in life. You're doing Chad, good. Chad was really nice, man. Last year, he hooked me up with uh, a bunch of his books. I love, I got this um, this other room that's got tons of books in it. And there's a whole area dedicated to, again, those limited edition books and, and then like just autograph books. So, Chad, like, you're in this uh, bookcase of fame. With your <laughs> so, stuff, but uh, man, that's awesome. I really appreciate you hooking me up with everything. Did I ever send you anything? Yeah, no, totally, dude. Yeah, yeah you I sent me so. a copy of yeah, Rabbit Heart. Okay, signed it for me. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So I love, uh, I love that. Yeah, like exactly. you, Jeremiah. Really nice. Your Amazon package is coming. When I open them up and there's books, it's like, yeah. damn, this is a great day. And then I'm like, damn, I hope I get to this shit someday too. <laughs> I I did want to say a quick uh, note about Jason. I can't, I, I can't remember how to pronounce his last name. It's like Caber, Caber, Caballero. Caballero. I know. I always yeah. want to say Caballero. Like, uh, yeah. I think that's Spanish for cowboys. I don't know. But isn't that, but, isn't that yeah, the know. style? Isn't that the style of clothes that they used to wear in the nineties? Oh, yeah, they button yeah, the top, yeah. they button right, the top yeah, button, right. and the rest were <laughs> undone. Or is that right. Calavero? Caballero yeah. tie, maybe or something. Yeah. <laughs> a anyway. bolo with it. <laughs> 
Anyway, uh, Jason is a great drummer. A uh, real good guy. I was just going to say, he's a great drummer. Yeah. yeah. And he last, about a year ago, he sent me a care package that had, it's funny, it had a CD of one of his bands, it had a t-shirt of one of his bands, and then it had uh, a package of cookies that he got from like a gas station or something. It's hilarious. <laughs> and, then, and then a little handwritten note, but I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, he's a, he's a good guy. Great guy. Great guy. Yeah, he, he reads like a, yeah, I don't know how any of them do that, man. I I know. It's mind-boggling. What I usually say is I'm not necessarily a slow reader. It's just that I don't make time to read. And yeah. when I do, it's it's usually just small little spurts of, you know, 15 minutes or a half hour or something like that. And just because, I you know, I guess other stuff in life, TV, whatever, procrastination. Yeah. Yeah, I, I go at a medium pace. You know, and it's like it's, I go at a medium pace. And I was thinking when I was, when you were talking about the person, the people that are doing like three hundred books a year, and I was imagining what it would look like if I was trying to do that. And it'd be one of those stupid gifs, man, where like the person's going super fast, like oh yes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there's just no way. <laughs> yeah. I, my mom bought me a book on speed reading, and it's taken me like five years to finish it. And so I, <laughs> I don't have I don't have That's the prayer one. man in the world. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that's funny. I got a couple questions. What's that? Uh, the Michael Myers behind you on the wall. Well, it's something I won. Uh, I'll, grab, I'll grab it off the wall. I, I'm a huge uh, Halloween fan, so I'm like. The, before the show, before the show, he he was uh, showing me with his computer. He moved his camera and was showing his artwork, and I'm like, man, bro, like you got to have that in the background because you got the. He's got his uh. Studio has been working on that bad boy, man. It's all oh, vintage and hey, look at this. Look, look, look. There you go. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, like, I, I met that I met that that girl, man. The girl from the Living Dead, the actress. I met her at a horror Kyra? Con. She was yeah. really cool. Yeah, she is. She I did I did a I interviewed her uh, Oh, you did? Like maybe twelve years ago for my magazine. Yeah. Okay. I've got an eight by ten of that that famous image of her like that. You know, from that's the, a that's a painting I did. Uh, in a oh, it is? oh, dude, that's yeah. oh, oh, sick, dude. I love that. She yeah. wrote, I so I got an eight by ten of that image, and she wrote, Jeremy, I hurt, <laughs> dude. Okay, okay, hang on, I gotta go. Yeah, yeah, because I yeah. did something like that, dude. You're yeah. a hell of an artist, Chad. Thank you. Okay, that's uh, really sick, man. God, yeah, look at that. This, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a spot on here. Let me see if I can, if you can see it, but you can barely see it where it says, or where's my hand here? It says, I heard. Oh, yeah. Right wow. It's, like kind of, yeah. it's kind of blended in the, in the background. Wow, man. That's cool. Yeah, but look at that. Yeah. I'm not sure yeah. the size. That piece ever goes up for auction, you hit me up first. All right. I would love to have that on my wall, dude. That's badass. Dude, that's that, you still you do do you do a lot of painting or anything? Um, not really, because <laughs> no. yeah. it, it kind of stresses me out because I'm a yeah. perfectionist and so it's yeah. it's not very it's not very therapeutic. So I mean I've got like an Etsy shop where I have a bunch of prints up there yeah. of uh of you know, like uh, stuff that I've done, like Rod Serling or Perry Farrell. Uh, I got Chris oh, right Mayfield. Um, you know, a bunch of different uh, Robert Smith, a bunch of musicians and and uh, and, just and he has portraits a, of he has people. a kind of a hidden YouTube channel. You got to figure out where it is. I won't give anybody hints, but he's got a YouTube channel. He has these videos where he he <laughs> recorded his paintings. Yeah, and it's cool man, because his kid would draw these crazy monsters, right? Mm -hmm. And when he was and, like when he was like three or four. Yeah. Yeah, he has one it was like worm. You know? And yeah. so yeah, so he what he does is he took the the artwork and then he would paint and make it his own creation with colors and shapes and stuff. And it's just dope. And it's really cool because wow. the way that he the way that he put it together to show how it goes along in the process of the whole thing and as it develops. And so it's kind of you know, uh, done in real time. And it was really cool, man. Before I forget, I had two things I want to do, uh, ask about. I just remembered Chad on your Facebook page. 
when I had mentioned about you had you had this top like twenty five list of band mm-hmm. or albums that that you know shaped you or influenced you or whatever, you also had like a top like ten books that had some kind of effect on you. One that I was surprised to see was um, Dean Koontz Intensity. Yeah. And and when I say surprised, I was surprised in a good way. And I want to tell you why. Um, I don't read a lot of Dean Koontz. I I should say I've read a lot of Dean Koontz, but the Dean Koontz I really like are few and far between. But my top two Dean Koontz books are intensity in the bad place and dude, me those are both mine okay awesome yeah we're a lot of like dude uh yeah that's crazy because so you know ron ronald malfi i've no. never read him but i know who you're talking about yes there was a post a couple months ago a few months ago on facebook that he was on where it's like something like coons or king or whatever and it was sort of like anti coons and I went on there and I, I said, man, I understand if you're not into Koontz, I get it. You know, he's not Stephen King. And he, especially in the last 10, 20 years is the way the books he writes are, 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 um, it's like a Koontz genre and it's not, not for me. It just doesn't hook me. But I did say before you bash Koontz, you really, I gotta say, man, intensity to this day is probably one of the greatest thrillers I've ever read in my life. Dude, the yeah. Bad Place, those books, man, are great. So all I wanted to say, <laughs> since I was on your show, was I saw you listed Intensity, and I was just like, Chad's the only dude I know, aside from me, that thinks that book is freaking great, man. And, and uh, I've read that book like three times, you know, had my mom read it. I've told people you got to read that and and the bad place so just wanted to bring that up and then the second thing i wanted to ask you both was where'd you get the name paleo cheese (laughs) i knew that was coming eventually (laughs) dude we've never even we've never uh dealt with this on the show we've never told anybody yeah. Really, you weird. Okay that that I yeah. if you don't want to, <laughs> no, sure. no, 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 yeah, no, it's fine. Secret, yeah. You don't got to tell me. No, it's timely. Ah, yeah, no, it's good. It's split between our names that uh, we kind of like nicknames. For when I was younger, I had a really good friend of mine named Aaron, Zombie Aaron was his mm-hmm. name. And uh, <clears throat> we were just two little punk rock kids going to shows and partying too much, and you know. All that kind of stuff, and he would call me Chatter Cheese because my name's Chad, and and it just it, it's not something that really stuck. But I used it a couple times for some things, like when I created um, like different accounts online and stuff. I, I used Chatter Cheese. You mm-hmm. outed yourself, then, man. You outed then, yourself. Um, <laughs> huh? Yeah. Said, you outed yourself, dude. You're toast <laughs> anyway. now, man. People are finding your stuff. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, but um, and then. <laughs> Jeremiah, go ahead with, you know. Yeah, uh, Paleocrat, my moniker on the screen. Uh, I wordsmithed that bugger. And as far as I know, and I've, I've asked people, you know, if there's any any place that they've ever seen in a book or anything where that word has been used prior to my usage of it, and find out because as far as I'm aware, I created that word. And uh, it's a it's smashing together uh words for ancient and yeah. law or rule mm-hmm. kind of like at the end of democrat or aristocrat uh and paleo being ancient or old and so i put those so it's the, the ancient rule um is what that is and so i i just use that as a uh, a moniker and when i was on amfm radio when i when i first started doing talk because i started with just playing rock music and then i did rock and talk and then eventually had my my own program where it was just talking um and a talk radio show. And when that was the case, it started out as Paleocrat Radio. And then we just decided to make it Paleo Radio. And that was before the whole Paleo Diet revolution, man. So, like, there was no... I didn't have any competition for the name. Now I get all these likes, these rando likes you know, on my old R- Paleo Radio page. And they're like, hey, man, what's your best Paleo Diet recipe? So I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm like, them, them people. But I have... But I... I 
I own Paleo Radio on Facebook. So that's my that's my Facebook page. And I've had in the past, you know, people kind of pitch to me and say, hey, you know, what, what would it take to get that from you? You know, kind of thing. Um, but that that's where it came from. So we put it together because we were making these videos and totally nuts, insane, crazy childish videos and uh and it, but but very very fun and yeah, just like home movie like skit stuff where we right. we you know would write write something and and then uh yeah the like character yeah. type stuff and, and characters so. that don't use their arms like he was a, a, a thing where he didn't use his arms for the day and i wasn't using my legs and i'm like crawling dragging my body on the floor with my my front arms i mean just bizarre stuff but a lot of fun they're really fun yeah. And uh and but that was paleo cheese. And then we yeah, started doing like movie our, reviews. Yeah. It was like our little production company. So when we yeah. we were like, well, hey, let's, you know, and some of those movies are, you know, like 25 years old almost, I think. So Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're, well, yeah, we, they're old, man. And dude, people people who know us and who know of that background and who listen to this show they will recognize that iconic sound at the end of every episode. <laughs> we right. have it. We, we end off with a fart noise, right? Uh -huh. And it's it's just the nastiest fart in the world. It's so terrible. Um, but it, it's always the way that it ends, and it has the Paleo Cheese logo on it. And that comes from the the old stuff that we did, especially the the movie reviews that we did. And we talked about, you know, should we should we keep that? You know, do we want yeah. to keep the colors, the the brown and the orange colors for the logo, kind of the creepy font and stuff? Yeah, and the misfits, said, misfits font. Yeah, we said, why not? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's how we started. Cool. You know, we're doing movie reviews of of crazy stuff like uh, Italian Spider Man, Kiss Meets the Phantom of the Park, Laser yeah. Blast. So I mean, movies Laser like that. Blast. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, man, <laughs> we we got we have to return to that because that I was like I think, stop motion at, uh, stuff. Yeah. Well, when I heard paleo cheese before I was ever asked to go on the show, you know, I follow Chad on Twitter and, and Facebook and everything. And I've always been to this day, my entire life, uh, been into paleontology because I have an uncle who's a paleontologist. And, uh, you know, a lot of kids are into dinosaurs and stuff, but I was really hardcore into paleontology, like all the scientific names, all the species, dinosaurs, blah, blah, blah. And as a lifelong paleontology fan and nerd, I'm a lifelong cheddar cheese fan. <laughs> yeah. So I saw paleo yeah. cheese. It was kind of like, if you guys are Simpsons mm -hmm. fans, it reminded me of the Mr. Sparkle episode, you know, like the Mastamura <laughs> fish works meet the uh, electric company, you know, bulb thing. And when they come together, the logo looks like Homer Simpson. And, he goes to Japan. <laughs> so that was paleo cheese for me, man. Paleontology and cheddar cheese coming together. So I had to ask. So of course, man. Yeah, yeah I'm glad you did. Actually, I'm a freaking dork. Haven't... What can I say? <laughs> Since I pulled this down, uh, I entered a contest on Instagram that was doing a book giveaway of like four or five different books, and uh, this print came with it. I I, I feel bad because I can't remember the artist's name. I think it's a girl, and she does these really crazy watercolor stuff really so great I'm a, I'm a huge michael myers fan and it's it's like a yeah it's got flowers in its hair it's just funny it says yeah. and so it goes on in helpless darkness so yeah there. love it love it so i see you got you got the tall man on your shirt yeah uh, is that right am i seeing that right yeah what this is actually is uh i designed this for the band toe tag which is uh the accused but without yeah the without tommy the guitar player okay this yeah they, this is what they did after and i designed this tr oh, the shirt awesome. for, i designed the shirt for them oh dude that's awesome yeah look at that dude nice man that's, that's not only amazing art dude it's an amazing segue love it yeah yeah, yeah. yes it's perfect man yeah it's it, fantastic it, it actually is. we're good like that yeah we're exactly yeah i'm so, pumped up dude to talk about phantasm man me, me too, too. I think me too, man. I'm I'm in. Man, yeah, phantasm. Uh, I'm self-proclaimed nerd and dork, and I'm proud of that. And I and I have I I will gush about movies, books, music. I'm passionate about. So uh, I got a lot of stuff on my brain about phantasm. 
All right, let's talk Phantasm. All right, let's do it. Yo, what's going on, everybody? My name is Duncan, and I'm the host of the podcast, Hash Time with Duncan. On this show, I tackle all the biggest sports stories between the hashes and beyond. If it's a big story, I'm going to talk about it and give you my opinion on it. Subscribe to my show wherever you get your podcast. All you have to do, search Hash Time with Duncan. And you can follow the show on Twitter at Hash Time with D. Peace.